I'm going to do the 10 things that nobody tells you about Dyson air purifiers. Starting with the first thing, the most important feature on any air purifier is actually going to be in the filter. Everything else is just in relations to how quiet it is, how much airflow it has, if it has a humidifier or not, what type of technology in terms of the fan system. But all of the air purification happens inside of the filter. And the filter on the Dyson is going to be located right here. And just by looking at the size with my hands, I can tell that this is not going to be for rooms up to 1,000 square feet, 2,000 square feet. Optimally, this is perfect for rooms probably up to 300, 400 square feet. And that just goes based on the size. But we're not going to just stop there. Because of this filter, with even without seeing more about it or knowing more about it, you can automatically assume a few things. For one, Dyson air purifiers, they're coming with special, specially created filters for their systems. This is not some air purifier you're just going to be able to plug and play. And on the formaldehyde edition that you see here, this filter is going to be specially engineered to capture formaldehyde, which is a lot smaller than 0.1 micron sizes. The second part is how does it do that? There is actually going to be a sensor inside of the Dyson that's going to be able to detect formaldehyde, which is 500 times smaller than 0.1 micron size. And because it can do that, it is better geared to capturing formaldehyde gases and things inside of your air. And if you're wondering what water do I recommend on a Dyson, I recommend you use some type of filtered or distilled water. Not necessarily hard water. Unless you're measuring your, the, how hard your water is, you can have a lot of mineral buildup in here very quickly. I have air humidifiers in the state of New Jersey where the humidifiers would go get caked on with calcium within about six weeks of use. This system is going to be very easy to open and remove and replace your air filter. This air filter is rated for 99.97% up to a 0.3 micron size, which is standard across the majority, if not all, of the various Dyson air purifiers. So let's take a closer look here at it. And you can see that the release valve is right here. So all you need to do is just pop that down, and that's going to open it up. It's going to allow you to open up the screen, and you can see how much fine dust has been released inside of the air. But it's easy to pop open and remove. You get a closer look on the inside. It's also easy to replace. This will be the actual filter. So there's a two part here. First, you have the first layer that's going to be for the humidifier. This is going to be your charcoal filter. And here will be the actual HEPA filter. Now, if you want to replace the HEPA filter, it, it is four particles up to 2.5 to 10 micron size. This is how you reopen the filter. There is a button here. I don't want to make it too dusty, but... And this is the actual filter from Dyson. This is a fully sealed HEPA H13 system. So that means everything should be locking into place, similar to what you find on your vacuums. Pop this side. The back is going to be also very similar. You have the all the dust. You have the same filter on the opposite end. Now let's talk about this. This is actually that this is so let's talk about this. This is the humidity. So let's talk about this. This is where the so let's talk about this. This is where the tank for your humidifier. Um, so let's talk about this. This is where the actual tank for the water reservoir for your humidifier inside of the machine is going to be placed. And this is what it looks like. And you can see lots of water there. And it's not using any standard lid or in terms of the wicking system. They Dyson had to go a little bit farther and they put a another filter inside of here just to keep the water cleaner. Of its efficient management system. But if you just want to replace the lid uh, and replace the water tank, this one gallon water tank is going to be able to hold that much amount of water. It's relatively waterproof. It's not going to spill. As you can see, we're moving it around and there's no spills and easy to replace. Once you have it here, you want to replace it, just insert it back inside. And voila. Now your water system is in place. If you want to remove it, you just have to place, click the buttons on both sides and it will pop out and you can take it with you on the go. If you're looking at the overall specifications, it weighs 18 pounds, which is pretty heavy. 
and that's not including all the water you might as a humidifier. Something that I do like about the Dyson is that the sensors are actually pretty accurate. So there are some air purifiers that will come with sensors and you're not gonna get a readout all the time. But here, because of how accurate it is, you do get close to what the air quality is gonna be inside of the room it's in. And then, especially if you're traveling or you're at work, you wanna turn it on or you wanna use it remotely or program it, the Dyson makes it really easy. Sixth feature is that it comes with backward airflow. You can make the airflow go back and forth just by pressing a button on the remote or inside of the app. Something that drives me crazy though is that since a lot of these features are utilizing buttons that are on the remote or on the app and not on the physical unit, how do you activate it if you ever lose your remote and your app or you have no Wi-Fi? What do you do? How do you connect it or what's the answer? Now the purpose of the deep clean cycle is not going to be to clean up any dust or debris that might be tracked inside of your machine. It's actually to help clean out and rinse out any water residue as well as if there's any calcium or mineral buildup to somewhat descale your unit without having you to descaling it. So why do you need a formaldehyde filter and a formaldehyde sensor? Because formaldehyde is very common inside of your home. Out of all the air purifying and health associations that we find in the US and inside of the entire world, do you know any that are recommending people to buy formaldehyde filters? This is something new, and I am excited that there's new formaldehyde sensors and filters, but I don't know if we have enough formaldehyde inside of our home and how effective it is at removing it that I can honestly recommend it to you. So if you're wondering, is this gonna be great if there's wildfire smoke that's coming at me from Canada, from some burning forest, or maybe you have some pollution or bad, bad quality air inside of your home for whatever reason, cooking, uh, your kids are messy, there's a lot of dust, you got like 100 cats. These are all reasons why an air purifier might be worthwhile for you. But if you're looking at value, the Dyson is gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be nice, it's gonna be technologically advanced, but it's not gonna be the best value because air purifiers are really judged by three characteristics, in my opinion. How large of a room is it going to be for? Because if it's underpowered, it's not going to be worthwhile, especially if I'm using it in a big room with tall ceilings, like this living room. And inside of a room like this, which is about 450 square feet with about 14 foot high ceilings, this is actually going to be underpowered inside of this room, which confuses a lot of people. Because if you're spending this kind of money on an air purifier, you're saying, what, how can this be underpowered? And that's because the filters and the airflow, it doesn't make or generate enough airflow, that it's not refreshing the air fast enough, especially with taller ceilings that double the surface area to make sure that all the air here is gonna be clean every 12 minutes. Actually, this takes about 30 minutes to refresh the air inside of this room. Another thing that people don't focus on, but really need to focus on on any air purifier is going to be the long-term cost. The long-term cost of operating any unit, regardless of how much you paid for it initially, is generally gonna be in the filter costs here. So in this unit, I gotta replace the filters. Dyson filters are more expensive. And that I got two-piece systems as well as the inner wick uh, for the hard water cleansing, feet deep cleaning filter inside the middle. I gotta replace that too. And the humidifier actually adds in another element that's gonna be able to damage or having you to clean that and maintain that regularly inside of this machine. And because it uses the wick system, it is not the same as using something like an ultrasonic system. Ultrasonic system, you just, Take it out, you can descale it, you can rinse it off, you can use some hard water uh, descaling product and it's gonna clean relatively easy. Another thing, if you're thinking about this as a humidifier, well, as a humidifier and you're thinking about how quickly is it gonna be able to humidify your air, it really depends on the room as well as is it sealed and how dry is it? Because if your environment is very dry, let's say I'm living in Arizona, this is gonna probably be out of water I would say even if you have it on regular mode, it'll probably run out of water within about 12 to 14 hours. If you have it in a general, you know, northeast state or you have somewhere that's relative humidity is gonna be in that 40% cap, the water tank here is gonna last you easily 30 plus hours. So it depends on where you are and how frequently you have to change the water tank that determines how likely you are to use a humidifier. I've tried many humidifiers and the systems that have very small tanks I find that unless I'm refilling it every single night and every single morning, they're not worthwhile for me. So I've upgraded a lot of my systems bigger, so I don't have to constantly refill the water. Another thing, well, because of this vent, especially if I wanna oscillate and operate and I wanna move it, uh, this has to open and close and reverse flow. Guess what happens? This vent, if you have any problems on the levers, especially because there's no gaps, 
it's going to break. And if that breaks, you're going to get a whistling sound. It's going to sound funny to you. It's not going to work properly. And the other things, you have to have so many different filters here. So replacement cost of those filters is going to be more expensive. And finally, the most indicative feature that I think is representative of this Dyson is that it has the air multiplier technology. It's built so that it can multiply the airflow. However, in real world use, you need to crank this up in order to get real airflow, especially if you're in a slightly larger room that's above 200 square feet. And it probably has similar airflow to a 40, maybe a 42 inch tower fan. And those tower fans are a dime a dozen and they're not very expensive. It does do it very quiet, but the new tower fans are very quiet as well. So then is this gonna be real good if you're trying to just get more airflow inside of the room? I don't know. If it's gonna be really good for air purification, it's pretty good, but you can get a lot more affordable options at a much lower price. Is it gonna be good as a humidifier? Now, I'm not against airwick technology here, but as much as they wanna dress it up, I much prefer a ultrasonic humidifier. So what is our verdict on this Dyson as well as the other Dysons from the TP07 line? Well, it's really coming down to that this is going to be something that people who are looking for the best you need the best, you need the best looking, you need the most technologically advanced, this is gonna be the right unit for you. However, if you're not into just getting the best because what are the issues with getting something so advanced? You have so many different fail points. The water pump can break, which is something that has been happening to a lot of people. Some of these th things that open and close, these little levers and switches, they can break. The technology that runs the switch here, as well as the circuitry can break. If you misinstall one of the one of the three filters, you're gonna have to reinstall it. It's not gonna turn on if something's open. There's so many different quality issues that, or potential quality issues, that I have to call that out. That is something that really scares me after I invest about $1,000 into something that I might be running 24-7, 365 days a year. And that's how I use the air purifiers in my house because I suffer from really bad allergies. And then if I'm using it with humidifier, well, then there's more parts that could get wet. There's more parts that could potentially fail because adding water into anything is an issue that is a potential issue. So do I think this is going to be the best use of your money? Probably not. And with that, thanks for watching, everybody. This is David with the French Glow showcasing to you the Dyson air multiplier technology, these humidifiers, these air purifiers, these formaldehyde filters. I'll catch you next time. Bye, bye, bye.